Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to defend. So today we'll be discussing about the installation of QRadar. So QRadar is a security monitoring platform that is used in many large enterprises. And at the same time, if you want to download a community edition, it allows you to monitor your home network, especially now with more people working from home. And at the same time, you can also use it for a test environment. And here is a installation file of OVA that can actually help you speed up the whole process of installing QRadar into your server. And the hardware requirements are very low and will be able to do a lot of detection of potential threats in your environment. If you have different kind of web servers, you host many different kinds of servers, we'll be able to push the locks into your QRadar machine. In your QRadar, we can very quickly detect all those threats. So without further ado, let us get started on the installation of QRadar into your Oracle VirtualBox. So the first thing you do is actually go into the IBM Security Community Edition. And on the website, you can actually click on Download QRadar Community Edition. So once you're in, all you got to do is key in your email address, your first name, last name, as well as the password. So you could actually register a account here. And once you register the account, you'll be able to gain access into the OVA file as well as the instruction on how you could actually install it. So let's go ahead and key in the email address and after that we'll be able to be prompted into the download page. So after you have signed up for your account or register your account or you have logged in into your account, you'll be prompted into the downloading IBM Curator Community Edition page. So all you gotta do is go ahead and click on the download and once you click on the download, it will actually download the OVA file which is about 4.1 gigabyte and when you click on save file, we can actually save it directly into the desktop or into the download page. So here we can see it takes about 41 minutes for us to complete the download. We can also go back into the community edition page and read on the document for download and install over here. So this would actually open up the QRadar community edition version 7.3.3. And we can zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. So of course, as we scroll down, we can see the instructions for installing QRadar. So of course, it is a free version that is actually intended for individual use. And of course, there are some capabilities of this. So here we can see the table of the capabilities. So we do get a lot of great features and functions. And of course, if you want a more complete solution, you can definitely get the enterprise version of it. So of course, scrolling down, we can see some of the minimum requirements. So first of all, you need a minimum of 8 gigabyte RAM. And of course, you need 10 gigabyte or more if we're going to add in a lot more capabilities. So of course, you need 250 gigabyte disk space and a minimum of two cores. So of course, there are some recommendation here of using six CPU cores and above. And of course, eight CPU cores and above, you have you using the area queries. So of course, we'll need the network adapter. And in this case, we are going to install it into the Oracle virtual box. So here we can see some of the setup process. So once we have completed the download, we can immediately go into a dot slash setup. So the download is completed and we have the OVA file over here. So all you got to do is go ahead and double click on it. So this would actually import all the configurations and settings into your Oracle virtual box. So it can, it depends on what kind of virtualization technology you're using. You could install it on VMware. You could install it on Hyper-V. And of course, in today's tutorial, we'll just be going through on the Oracle VirtualBox Manager. So here we can see on the import virtual appliance, and we can see the operating system type, the CPU, the number of RAM. So I'm going to change the CPU over into four cores. And of course, the RAM will remain as it is on 6144 megabyte. And we will leave the rest as default, and we will check on the reinitialize the MAC address of all our network cards. So go ahead and click import on that. So this would import all the settings, configuration, the virtual disk image. So it could take a minute or so. And once you complete the import, we'll be able to start up very quickly into the Oracle virtual box and be able to kickstart QRadar. So once the import is completed, you can see on the left side that we have VM. So we can go ahead and right click and click on settings. So I'm going to change this to the QRadar. CE. So this is the community edition. Click OK on that. And we can go ahead and click start. So this will start up the virtual machine. And of course, if you have any questions along the installation, you can always go back into the documentation page. So this is the documentation page that you will see. And once you have the documentation page, you can look at the instructions about how you can go about installing QRadar. 
So going back into the virtual machine, here we can see we are loading into the Red Hat operating system. And of course, we got a localhost login. So I'm going to go ahead and actually expand the view so it's easier for you to see. So I'm going to expand to 200% and I'm going to enter root for the localhost login. So hit enter on that. And of course, we got to key in a password. So I will key in the password of the new password. So once we retype the new password, we will be inside the local directory. So we can go ahead and enter dot slash setup. Hit enter on that. And of course, they have some agreements for you to go ahead. Hit enter on that. And we have to complete reading all of the license agreement. So once you have completed reading it true, you can actually enter Q. And once you enter Q, you can go ahead and hit enter to accept the terms and hit enter on that. So of course here we are about to install the curator community edition 7.3.3. Do you wish to continue? Enter Y for yes and hit enter on that. So it will take some time for the installation to complete. We reckon about anywhere from 30 minutes all the way to an hour. So I'm using on the solid state drive. So it is actually pretty fast. So let's wait it out and see how it goes. So now that the initial configuration of Curator Community Edition is now complete, we can go ahead and go into the interface. So all we got to do is change the password for the administrator or enter the new password. So go ahead and key that in. So now that we have keyed in the new admin password, it will complete the configuration. And upon completing the configuration, we all have to do is access through your favorite web browser, key in the IP address, and we will be done. So now we have the installation completed, and all you got to do is enter ifconfig. So once you enter ifconfig, we can actually see the local IP address is 192.168.1.17. And all you got to do is go into any of your favorite browser and all you got to do is key in the IP address followed by slash console and you will be brought into the JSP login page. So go ahead and key in the admin username as well as the password that you have set after the completion of the installation. So now we go ahead and click login. So this would bring us into the information. So I'll go ahead and save the password. So here we got a license agreement. So once you read through the license agreement, you can go ahead and click accept on the license agreement. So now that we have accepted the license agreement, we will be forwarded into the main console page of QRadar. So of course, we have not set any log sources into QRadar. So we will see mostly an empty screen. And of course, in subsequent tutorials, we will be adding in a lot of different kind of logs information into QRadar so that we will be able to detect threats, able to look out for deauthentication, look out for exploits, denial service, and many other key capabilities. So stay tuned, and I hope you learned something valuable today. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your queries.